Welcome back to my channel guys. Apparently I'm on a bit of a decluttering frenzy because I decluttered my nightstand last night which if you didn't see that video go check it out it's posted and then this morning I continued the journey on and did my shoes. So if that's something you guys are interested in seeing then stick around. So I'm showing you a couple of things that I've already decided to declutter quite a while ago that I have in that basket and a couple of things sitting there surrounding it. And I've also got all of my shoes out here, literally every single pair of shoes that I own with the exception of my gym shoes and my work shoes because those are a no brainer, they're staying. But this shoe rack was what was in my bedroom closet and it's really starting to look quite messy and really needs to be tackled. And I'm gonna try to go through these and be as realistic and discerning as possible um, so that I'm not just holding on to stuff that I'm kind of hemming and hawing about. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to go through these with as much discernment as possible because I know for sure there's a few pairs in there or one or two pairs that I don't really reach for or I'm kind of on the fence about and sometimes I like them and sometimes I don't. And then I have pairs that are like my die hard, I love them, can't go wrong, would never get rid of them kind of shoes. I thought I would show you guys this as well. It was on my Instagram the other day, but this candle is my newest addition to the living room from Walmart. I used to have a Bath and Body Works candle there. It was the Marshmallow Fireside, and that one went through its whole life. It completely burned out. And I picked this one up for like, I think $19 at Walmart, and I just think it's so cute. It's like the perfect little candle for the living room and it actually burns really really slowly I can leave it lit for a long time and it hardly goes down in the wax at all so I thought that was a pretty good little win so I just lit that to kind of set the mood for us today and I'm just sipping on a cup of coffee nothing special just my Maxwell house super cheap super inexpensive in my favorite robin egg blue mug that I love so much which I've had for eons and eons Okay, so before I get into the shoe decluttering, I'm gonna show you guys a couple of things that were already going to be decluttered. I've had these set aside for a while now and I may as well go through them and just share with you guys what I've decided to get rid of over the last month or so. So the first thing I shared in um, the video that I actually uploaded this morning, but that I filmed last night, which was from my nightstand declutter, and that is this marbled, or not marbled, my gosh, uh, mirrored jewelry box which is actually really really pretty I think it's actually gorgeous and I would love to keep it but I don't really have anywhere to keep it and it's just kind of big and I just don't really need all that space um, I also found that what I was doing was actually putting stuff in the bottom here I didn't even realize what I had in there and then when I cleaned it out there was so much stuff I didn't need and anyways I think that somebody else will get some use out of that box the second thing is that Kate Spade bag. Yeah, I've had that bag since I was in university, like my first year of nursing school, and I really like it. It's very pretty. Um, the color is beautiful, but I'm just kind of over the shape a little bit. I think, I don't know, it feels a little bit dated to me. I absolutely loved it when I first got it, but I wore it so much. And the other thing that drives me crazy about it is, yeah, you have to pretty much leave this thing done up all the time if you want to wear it as a shoulder bag. Otherwise, these things flop around back and forth. But then it's a really big pain because whenever you need to get into the bag, you have to undo this and then undo the other one. So it's really just kind of annoying. It's a nice bag if you're going to use it just as a satchel. But if you're going to carry it um, crossbody or on your shoulder, it becomes really cumbersome. Yeah, so I thought that I might change my mind about that bag, so I've kept it for quite a while. I've been talking about getting rid of it for a really long time, and obviously the time has come that I think I can just safely get rid of it because I just don't think I'm going to reach for it again. The next thing is this Michael Kors wallet. Um, it's a black leather um, zippy wallet. It is in total perfect condition. It's absolutely beautiful. But again, I've had this for a really, really long time. I've probably had it for five or six years. That's just a testament to how well Michael Kors holds up, I think, because it looks pretty much brand new. It's, yeah, it's in great condition, um, but it just doesn't go with any of the bags that I have. And it's a little bit too big for a lot of my handbags. And I'm kind of trying to keep matching wallets and matching handbags as I move forward and I don't have anything black and I don't think I will get anything black because I'm just not a black handbag type of person. So I'm either going to sell this or give it away to somebody who can get some use out of it. The next things that I'm going to be decluttering and I think I'm going to try to sell them online is three different perfumes. So the first one, this is Narcisso Rouge. This is a really nice perfume. It's kind of a vanilla, woody, musky 
um, it's kind of like the other Narcissos, but it's got a deeper kind of a twist to it. It's a little bit sexier. It's a little bit more sweeter. Um, it's got a bit of a plasticky kind of note that's hard to explain. My boyfriend really likes this, but I don't love it. And I have a couple of other Narciso in my collection that are way better than this one that I just like so much more. So there's no point in holding on to this one because I'm honestly not going to grab for it as much. It's really nice. I loved it when I first got it. I was like all about this perfume. I thought it was the greatest thing in the world, but I've kind of moved on from it since then. So I'm going to try to sell that one. The second one is Miss Dior Absolutely Blooming. This perfume, I really liked the smell on the atomizer and I really liked the smell on paper in the store. However, when I spray it on myself, it dries down to like a really synthetic, weird, rubbery kind of a fruit smell. I just don't like the way it smells on my skin. I much prefer the original Miss Dior. So I know a lot of people really, really love this perfume and don't get me wrong, I think it smells beautiful. Even now when I take the lid off and I smell it, I think it smells so gorgeous and I'm like, what am I doing getting rid of it? But I know somebody else will get more use out of this and it's a brand new bottle. It's totally full. I've only had it for a month or two. So yeah, I'm gonna try to sell this one online as well. I don't know how much luck I'm gonna have considering all the COVID stuff. I know a lot of people are kind of tight on cash and stuff like that, but um, hopefully I can sell it before it goes bad because I honestly won't wear it. The last one is this Carolina Herrera Good Girl Legere. So it is the light version of Good Girl. It comes in this really beautiful bottle and this is basically, if you haven't smelled this, this is basically like the original Good Girl, but it has notes of um, lemon and it's a little bit fresher in the opening, hence the name Legere or Light. Um, so this is more appropriate for like daytime. And when you first spray this, it smells really, really beautiful. Unfortunately, it gives me a massive headache. So even though I really, really like it, I can't wear it. Um, so I'm gonna have to sell it or give it away to somebody who can get a little bit more enjoyment out of it than I can. So that's it for fragrances and handbags and other odds and ends that I'm gonna be decluttering. And now we can move on to the shoe situation. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is basically start on the left and one by one just go through them and basically ask myself the questions, do I love these shoes? And do I actually wear these shoes? Or if they're brand new, can I see myself wearing them? And if I can't see myself wearing them in the next six months to a year, then I may as well not keep them. So starting off with this black pair from Sam Edelman Circus, this is just a pair of ballet flats and they're, okay, Kat, are you done scratching yourself with your little bell? These are actually brand new. Um, the only the only thing I don't like about ballet flats is look at the back. The backs get so scuffed because when you drive, you rest your heel on the floor of your car and they get so scuffed. Like this shoe's literally only a couple of months old or three months old and it already looks so bad. Um, but these were such a good investment. They're such a good go-to when I just need something quick to run out the door, especially in fall or winter. I tend to wear a little bit darker shoes in fall and winter, like brown and black. And then I save all of my nude shoes for um, spring, summer, and sometimes fall. These ones are a really nice essential. They were also really inexpensive. Um, so I'm going to keep them. I wear them pretty much all the time. The next pair is very similar. These ones were from Le Chateau. They're a leather ballet flat. Um, they were such a good deal. I think they were like 40 or $50, but I got them on sale at the time. So they are real leather. Um, I really like the little detail on the toe. Again, they do scuff pretty easily, unfortunately, but I've had these shoes for probably three or four years and I've gotten so much use out of them. I love them. They're so comfortable. They may not be the prettiest thing, but when you're in a pinch and you're just zipping out to do something and you just need something cute, comfortable, and neutral to put on your feet, these shoes are the greatest in the world, so I will definitely be keeping them. I Next up, we have a pair that I'm obviously not gonna be getting rid of. I love these shoes. These are my Louboutins that my boyfriend got me for a gift. They are absolutely stunning. Um, and you know what? They don't hurt as much as they used to. I tried them on the other day with a dress and they didn't hurt my feet as much as they did. So I wonder if I'm not breaking them in a little bit. But anyways, I really, really love those shoes and I'll definitely be keeping them. They're like my dressiest, sexiest, most coveted pair of shoes. They're probably my favorite shoe in my collection, even though they're maybe the least worn. When I do wear them, I feel like a million bucks and I reserve them for special occasions and I love, love, love them. So next is a pair of high heels by Sam Edelman and they are a strappy high heel sandal. Um, these are are a four inch and they're in the color nude. They're absolutely beautiful. I really love 
nude shoes because nude shoes go with everything and they match my skin tone and to me they're just the most flattering they make your legs look longer i just think they look very classy yeah so these ones are one of my favorites they are a little bit on the higher side they're really nice to have on hand if you're going out for dinner or something like that they're kind of like a go-to for me when i want to be um, sexy and put together but not over the top so I really really like them if you guys haven't checked out Sam Edelman's shoes I highly suggest it they're kind of similar to like the Stuart Weitzman's of the world except they are much cheaper like much more affordable um, and they're just as beautiful so I'll be keeping those ones for sure um, these ones I'm on the fence about these ones are a faux pair of Valentino rock studs which came from China. They're by a brand called Chris T. They were about $60. I wanted them because I wanted a pair of Valentino Rockstead shoes. I think they're so gorgeous and so iconic. However, couple problems. They're not the greatest quality. Um, and I can tell that like even though they're supposed to be similar, the straps are a little bit wider. They're not quite as flattering as I think the real Rocksteads would be. And they're also not as good quality. If you look at the back, it's starting to lift a little bit there and it was doing this like it was doing that right off the get-go so it's just a super like not good quality shoe and to me I don't care what brands are I don't care how much they cost I just want them to be nice and I want them to be well made and unfortunately these ones are not well made so I kind of want to just wait until I can actually afford a pair of the real Rocksteads um, because I don't know what it is but when I wear them I feel cheap I feel just really cheap when I wear them. So I might just rehome those to somebody and uh, just put real Rocksteads on my wish list for my birthday or something like that. Here's another pair that I'm for sure gonna be keeping. These are my Michael Kors um, T-Strap Gold Sandals. I love these so much. I've gotten so much use out of them. They were really inexpensive and they just add a little bit of class to a casual outfit because obviously they're a very casual shoe, but the gold just elevates it a little bit. Those are definitely going to stay. These are a newer addition to my collection. They are by Mark Fisher. I think I got them from Nordstrom Rack. They're just a really cute little slide sandal with a block heel on the back. And I really like that because they're very minimal looking. I wanted something that was kind of a cross between a flat sandal and a dressy strappy sandal. I wanted something that was just kind of like somewhere in the middle. And these ones are really great. They go with a lot of my dresses. They look effortless they look put together um, but at the same time they're very comfortable and they're also very minimal and just easy to wear so these are brand new so obviously I'm gonna keep them here's another pair that I know I'm gonna keep I am all about ballet flats I love them so much I think they're so chic and so easy to wear and I always get my ballet flats in nude with the exception of that one pair because a nude ballet flat even though it's a flat shoe so it's not a heel it makes your foot and your leg look just a lot more elongated and they're so flattering and so pretty this one is also by sam edelman i absolutely love them i love the little decal on the front um it's very similar to the tory birch ones except these ones were only about 40 bucks so you can't go wrong these ones were from uh, Nordstrom Rack. If you guys are interested, I'm pretty sure they still have them on Nordstrom Rack. They're so cute and I'm going to wear them a lot this summer for sure. Next we have another pair of strappy high heel sandals by the same brand. These ones are only a three inch though instead of a four inch. These ones are hands down indispensable. I love them so much. They're so comfortable and they add a little bit of chicness and sophistication but without being too high. They don't hurt your feet. I really like these. They're just a very easy go-to when you don't know what to wear but you want to look a little bit dressed up especially in the summertime I can honestly even wear these going to get groceries with like a nice pair of jeans and a nice shirt they just elevate your look instantly but without hurting your feet so those are a must-have I think honestly out of all the high heel shoes in the world if I could only have one it would be a three inch strappy sandal or a three inch pointy toe in a nude color they're so versatile and you can use them for everything what I like about Sam Edelman too I've shared before is I really like the detail he puts into the sandals I think the little scalloping on the edge is so cute and just adds a little something extra and also um, the shoe is padded so it's very comfortable next up we have a Dorsey pump from call it spring these ones are black and they're just a three inch heel yeah, they're just a three inch heel. Very basic, very cute. I think that depending on the dress you wear, you can make these a little bit dressed up or you can wear them a little bit more casually. I have worn these to things like job interviews in the past. Um, I wore them to a funeral once. That's a little bit morbid, I know, but 
everybody needs a pair of black high heel pointy toe shoes in their closet, even though they're probably one of the lesser worn pairs. They're just something I can't part with and they're exactly the perfect type of pump. I really like the Dorsey style shoe that have the cut out there. I don't like shoes, um, high heel shoes that have a totally closed in all the way around. To me, that just dates the shoe, makes them look a little bit older. So by having that little cut out there, it looks a little bit sexier and a little bit younger and I just really like them. I love these shoes. I wear them all the time. These are newly added to my collection. These are a T-strap sandal by Coach. Um, they're in a cream color. Um, they're just very plain, very basic, very casual. I got them because I wanted a pair of casual flat sandals that wasn't a flip-flop. I don't know if you guys saw my last shoe declutter video, but I was talking about how I needed to get rid of my flip-flops because they were so tacky looking and they just were falling apart. Flip-flops just don't last either. And so that's why I got these ones to kind of replace them. So I figured when I wanted to have a little bit of a dressier look, I would wear the gold T-strap. And when I wanted to be a little bit more casual, I would wear the cream colored uh, leather T-strap. But T-strap flats are really flattering. I think they're very minimal and chic and they go with everything. We'll keep those. On to the next pair of shoes. These ones are so cute. These are by Kate Spade. I got them for myself as a Christmas present last year, believe it or not. They were on sale from the Bay. And I really like that they have a very simple low heel, a little block heel. They're very Chanel-esque. They look very similar to um, the Chanel block heel almond toes that you can get, but these ones are obviously quite a bit cheaper. But I just think they're so chic and so cute. They are incredibly comfortable. You could wear them with a nice dress or you could wear them to work, to the office. Um, they're just super versatile and they're super adorable and I can't wait to wear them. Because I live in Canada, I don't get a chance to wear most of these shoes. And I think that's why they're so special to me because when I do get to wear nice shoes or I do get to dress up, um, I just, I really like to feel my best and put my best foot forward. And I think that's why I love luxury items so much. Not that I wanna collect luxury items, but I think that's why I like them so much because it is so rare for me to actually be able to wear that stuff because it's snowing here nine out of 10 times, so. <laughs> So yeah, these ones are adorable. They're not going anywhere. Here's another staple that isn't going anywhere. These are exactly the same as those last nude sandals that I showed you, except these are in black. I like to have an option of black to wear. If I'm dressing up and I need a black shoe as opposed to a nude shoe, there is the odd occasion that I will choose black over nude. Sometimes you have a black handbag or you just wanna have a little bit more of a classic look. I think black is very classic and these sandals are really cute. So I just have them as kind of an alternative option. Let's talk now. Now about a pair that I'm not sure about. These are a block heel from Steve Madden. Um, they are four inches tall. They're fairly comfortable because they have a really nice thick strap there and the strap is um, translucent so it does make the shoe look very minimal on your foot. The reason I'm on the fence about them is because I've only worn them once since I purchased them and I got them at the beginning of the year last year. I usually just tend to grab more something a little bit more um, elegant and to me a really thick chunky block heel isn't super elegant but those are a potential donation or something I could sell. I just don't know if I'm going to grab them very much over the next year. I think nine times out of 10 when I'm getting dressed and I'm picking a shoe, I usually grab something like this a lot more than I would grab those ones. Here's a pair that have stood the test of time. I love these shoes. I talked about them in my last shoe declutter video. I've had them for probably five or six years, if not longer. I absolutely love them. They're just a really nice nude suede pump with a little strap around the ankle and they're just so versatile and so comfortable and they go with everything and when I don't know what to wear but I wanna be dressed up, especially if it's not sandal weather, those are the ones I pick. And obviously the Louboutins are not appropriate for most days of the week. <laughs> so if I want a high heel pointy toe but something that's comfortable and appropriate for everyday wear. That's what these are. And they make me feel really put together. So these ones were a really good deal. These were by Aldo, really inexpensive. I love them. So those ones are definitely not going anywhere. They are such a staple in my wardrobe. Okay, we only have three pairs of shoes left. Um, so last we have this pair of faux alligator leather sandals by Michael Kors and these are in a shade of light pink. I really really like these. I've worn them a lot and I think I will continue to wear them a lot in the future and I have worn them a lot. I'm not quite ready to part with them even though 
I really like these ones too. In fact, I think I like these ones better. I'm still not quite ready to part with those ones. Plus look, they match my nail polish. And then I have this pair by Call It Spring. These are kind of my only like office daytime appropriate kind of shoe. I often wear these if I have conferences to go to. I often wear them if I have um, some kind of education day to go to or some sort of certificate renewal. Um, yeah, they're just a really nice, sensible looking. They make you look kind of smart. They make you look kind of put together. Um, they do add a little bit of height. There's about a half an inch in the back. So I actually do really like those ones. I haven't had a lot of opportunity to wear them lately, um, but I'm gonna keep them because if I ever do need to go to some sort of an office thing or um, you know, an interview where I wanna be really toned down and a high heel isn't appropriate, then I think these are a really good option. And last but not least, we have a pair of canvas sneakers. These are by Sam Edelman. They do have about an inch, inch and a half of height on them. These are brand new. I have not worn them. I basically got them because I felt like I needed a pair of white casual sneakers. The last time my boyfriend and I went on vacation, we did quite a bit of sightseeing. We went to the Hoover Dam and to Red Rock Canyon and stuff like that. And I was literally wearing a pair of ballet flats, which was fine, um, but my feet were so sore by the end of the day. And I decided then and there that I should get a pair of normal sneakers that were good for sightseeing and things like that. So I think these ones are pretty cute. They're definitely on trend um, with what you see today. So we'll see how much I wear them this year. And if I don't wear them this year, then I'll probably end up decluttering them because I do tend to go more for the dressier, um, kind of more elegant stuff. Um, but yeah, I think those will be a nice staple to have in my shoe wardrobe. Okay, so this is the overview of the shoes. All the ones there are the ones I've decided to keep. I know I'm gonna wear them. I know that they fit my style. And these are the two that I'm thinking of decluttering. Those ones I think for sure, 100%. The Block Heels by Steve Madden. I'm still kind of on the fence. I would like your input. If anybody wants to make a suggestion for me about them, should I keep them? Should I get rid of them? I'm not really sure. Those might be one that I might have to put in a box under my bed and just keep them there for a few months. And if I don't miss them after a few months or a year, then maybe I can declutter them. But for sure, those ones are going to go. So now all I have to do is actually put these ones back on the shelf and try to make them fit and try to make them look nice. A couple of them were from the shelf in my bedroom. Um, so I will just go put those ones back first and then we'll see what we're left with. All right, so this is my donation pile in total. Everything that I talked about as well as those two pairs of shoes, which I now need to photograph and post online with the exception of the ones that are kind of falling apart. Those I'll just give away to anybody who wants them because aside from the back kind of coming off, they're in excellent condition. And on the shelf in my bedroom, which I showed you guys last night when I was filming my nightstand declutter video, I did put on the bottom my tallest pair of high heel sandals by Sam Edelman and then I put my other sandal or my other pointy toe shoes there because those are two of my favorite, probably most glamorous types of shoes. So I thought those could have their own little display area and I kind of just rearranged this a little bit. I still might rearrange the bottom a little bit. I'm not really happy with how that looks with the green purse. I would like something a little prettier in its place, um, but I also don't have anywhere else to put the green handbag. So for now, that's where it's going to sit. And yeah, that's it for that shelf. And all of the other shoes are on the shoe rack back in the closet and they all fit now. So I did put the two pairs of flats that I wear in the winter and when I'm running errands, I just put those by the front door so you won't see these those ones here. Um, but on the bottom, I just have my white sneakers and then my two pairs of T-strap sandals and then my work appropriate kind of office loafer. And I put those ones on the bottom because those are probably my least worn shoes. Um, and I don't even know if I'm gonna end up wearing those ones. I hope that I do. And then in the middle, I put my two pairs of ballet flats that are nude colored, um, my really pretty block heels from Kate Spade, my new block heel sandals. And on the third shelf is where I put all of the high heels, which if you guys remember from a video that I made in the past, I just put a piece of plastic protector here just to make sure the heels wouldn't fall through the cracks. And then on the very top, I have my summertime Louis Vuitton never full bag, um, which I only wear during the spring and summertime. So that's where he sits. And then I also put the two shoe boxes that were on the ground up top. So there's my shoe boxes and my duster bags so that they're not taking up space on the floor. And then I just put the little Chanel gift bag on the floor beside it because I thought it looked kind of pretty. 
So I also did end up taking off the command hooks that were up against the wall from last night's video. So now it looks really bare in here, um, but it's gonna look so nice once I get a picture or some shelves or something up. Um, but I really like how that corner looks. I'm gonna do something about the bag in the bottom. I don't really like how that looks there, but everything else I'm really, really liking. And then it's just a matter of dressing up that corner, which I was talking to you guys in my last video about. So if you want to see my plans for that, then check that video out. I won't go over it again today. So that's it for today's video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed. I'm sorry that it was so long, but whenever I declutter my shoes, it ends up being a really long video. Head on over and follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I share a lot of stuff on there that I don't share on YouTube, and I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy, and I will see you guys all next time. Mm -hmm.